been through all the processes and they've tried and, and they've even double checked it at different universities because obviously you don't want to reject it you want to support the farmer but it's got to be rejected because it's not what we want and it's not what we need and we need to know that I'm putting sundew in the bottle and not some marigolds or whatever they've picked instead Correct. so it is super important and that's the amazing thing with working with Australian companies at a company like yourself where we know the science is there we know you've got your scientists sitting in there they're making sure that everything that goes through is what it says it is and that's what the TGA they make sure that we get this amazing product. Hello and welcome. Mentoring with Geraldine is a bite-sized practitioner podcast for naturopaths, nutritionists, herbalists and practitioners. This podcast responds directly to your needs, the needs of the practicing natural therapist. With interviews, herbal discussions, something business and something clinical each week, you'll get the variety you need and enjoy to stay motivated in practice. Hello and welcome again to Mentoring with Geraldine and I'm very lucky to have Christine Thomas from the Herbal Extract Company in Sydney with us again today and um, what's happened is Sanju. Sanju, which as a herbalist I grew up with and is one of my favorites and I would put that in most tonics and then I've noticed recently I haven't been able to get it and I've just thought yeah la, 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 I haven't been able to get it whatever it'll come back these things you know come back but what has happened Christine tell the story. Yes. Yes, we, it seems to be the lung herbs we lose too, I find. Mm. Really, there was, you know, well, comfrey was a really good one and yeah. hydra and yeah. you know, they tend to be the ones that, you know, have a bit of controversy surrounding them, but not Sanju. Sanju actually, so I was just talking with Annette, um, our general manager, mm-hmm. who does a lot of the ordering. Yeah. And so there's a few things. Sanju was coming from Madagascar. Oh, wow. Africa. Okay. And yeah. it's just, I think she tried a couple of years ago and the price was really prohibitive. Yeah. She thought, I'll try and find another solution mm. and then just couldn't get it. Oh, right. Sometimes it has to do with it not being wildcrafted or picked, yeah. you know, trouble with that. And just on that conversation now with COVID, we're actually probably going to see this happen a lot more. Yeah, because we're so Buku comes from South Africa, and we're having a lot of problem getting things from Africa. Oh, of course, yeah, yeah. the transportation yeah. and this illness yeah. over there. Yeah. yeah, with people not harvesting. Yeah, um, because of COVID and lockdown, and um, the yeah. other problem is with customs. Apparently, Annette was saying, oh, "I've got to try and remember," but say Brisbane has a one week turnover with customs we've got two weeks in sydney melbourne's a month right bringing wow. anything is just going to take a lot longer yeah that's a and then if we have a problem in the lab if it's identity or quality yeah. problem then yeah. that's back to the drawing board so yeah i think unfortunately we might see this happening a little bit more but yeah with sanju there was just there was a few little issues and we just haven't been able to get it right Right. So, uh, first of all, it was a prohibitive price, and we do try and negotiate on that so the price doesn't go up too high. Yeah. And then we just couldn't get it. So, yeah, such a shame. I mean, it's such a traditional one. I mean, it's just sort of yeah. been around. I didn't realize it came from Madagascar, though. No, yeah, no, no. that's a long yeah. way to get anything from Madagascar to Australia. Exactly. So, yeah. Well, you know, I think um, just going forward, I think we might have to start looking as herbalists um, closer to home. Yeah. Yeah. With, uh, you know, we might have to accept that. I mean, I'm, this is just my personal opinion. Yeah. <laughs> you know, just as far as like we sort of demand all these herbs from all over the world, but we might need to just um, start thinking about alternatives or substitutes for those ones that are very difficult to get and expensive. Yeah, definitely. I mean, it's a great herb and I'm surprised it doesn't grow in Australia, but of course now we don't just grow anything in Australia. It's not like, you know, 200 years ago, oh, we need this plant for this herb. Let's just plant it wherever we are in the world. Now it's, well, you know, is this plant right for this country? And, you know, we have got some other alternatives there in your recent mail out. You sent us a few other alternatives. Yeah. And I did notice, I suddenly realised as I was reading it, that Atahoda, I always forget to use that one. That yeah. was hilarious. I'm looking at it going, oh, that would work really well. And those ones I've been putting sundew into and haven't been able to get it for a few years and um, or however long it is. But um, yeah, Adahoda, I'd forgotten about that one completely. 
Yeah, and it's quite interesting just when you start looking at the substitutes, how many similarities there are. I'm mm -hmm. sure there's a lot of naturopaths out there who have their favourite and they say, I, I just can't get that sort of result without that herb. Yeah. You know, because it depends on the person, not really the uh, the issue that they have, whether it's asthma or something, you're not going, here's the herb for asthma, you and here's the herb for that person. But um, there is quite a few substitutes for Sanju. There are. There are. I mean, I use Alicampane and Grindelia now, and I don't have any Adahodoran. I am down on that one. There's definitely a black mark for me, but <laughs> I will need to get some in. But um, that's the other point you just made there about making sure. I mean, that's the thing. I mean, this is, as we, I do keep saying, a practitioner podcast. Because remembering that we need to mix these in the correct amounts for the right person to for what they need. I mean, when we train, I've just marked a load of herbal exams. So in those herbal exams, of course, they were writing the energetics of the herb as well. And when we talk about energetics, we're not talking about fairy gardens. We're talking about the warmth or the cooling. We're talking about how it will support. Because if you've got something really cooling and cold and you actually need to move the cough, so obviously the common one for people thinking who aren't herbalist listening, they might be thinking, well, what's warming? Well, ginger. I mean, you know how warm that is. You have a cup of ginger mm. tea, you warm up. So peppermint is actually very cooling. And so when we look at all of the herbs, they have that hot, cold, and that works with the problem. And of course, someone who's coughing, is it a wet cough? Is it a dry cough? Is yeah. it better for heat? Is it better for cool? And we ask those questions as part of the naturopathic consult so that we can get the right mix of herbs. So, you know, five herbs to eight herbs in a bottle. I go up to eight herbs sometimes and they all have to fit with the person and the pattern and what's going on. And we've got a really good list here of alternatives to sundew. I was quite surprised so many came through actually and that you've got such a long list. So yeah. um, you've almost got a mix there for a good cough, yeah. to be honest. <laughs> Yeah, well, it's yeah, exactly. You could do something. It's, um, yeah. I mean, what sort of stood out for me was that it's for this sort of dry, irritating cough. Mm. And also, I think the one that stood out the most is probably the closest substitute was licorice because yeah. sundew not only is good for that sort of dry, irritating cough, whooping cough, bronchitis, asthma, but also gastric complaints and stomach yeah. ulcers. Yeah. Which licorice is also really good for. Yeah. A lot I of think research that one there. stood out a lot as far as just being a direct substitute yep. but then some people it's a licorice is a bit tricky yep contraindications there across the board with all sorts of problems so we do have to be careful with giving that one yeah yeah so then there's the other ones you said Aratoda has that great anti-spasmodic action mm. that it's famous mm. for it's been used for centuries in the Ayurvedic tradition yeah but also interestingly there's some preclinical evidence, so we can't extrapolate that to humans. Right, yeah. There have been no studies in humans that may not have that action in humans, but preclinically it has been shown to have anti-ulcer activity and improved symptoms of dyspepsia. So, again, it could be worth trying yeah. for those people who have a cough and also have gastric issues. Yeah, I mean, when you're coughing so much as well, there can be a lot of pain in the stomach. Um, just simply from the coughing and people often eat differently when they're coughing because of the breathing issues. So often with the dyspepsia, it's a really good idea to get a bitter in there as well to help with that digestion and help them feel soothed through the gut and through the lungs and through everything that's happening while they're doing that cough. So yeah, so that, I mean, that, that'd have to be a good one, wouldn't it? Yeah, and that's, um, that's very old school. Actually, Lindsay Shum, who owns our company, he's a very old school type of practitioner. And he, the first question he always asks is, you know, how are your poots? <laughs> you know, like he always treats the gut. That's sort of that old naturopathic, yeah. you know, doesn't it? You treat the gut and yeah, you're going to help the body and the immune systems, you know, base, basically mm -hmm. based in the gut, most of the immune system. So treating the gut, you're treating the whole person so yeah. it makes sense that a lot of these herbs treat the gut as well yeah a lot of them have an effect where you're treating the gut you're soothing the gut and it has a knock-on effect into other parts of the body and it's you know when I trained the mantra um, there's actually a song it's not really a song because it's <laughs> it's a it was a chant and it was death pestilence war death pestilence war and so I managed to remember when I was writing an exam, gut, liver, immune, gut, liver, immune. And that was the way to work on the person, work on the gut, work on the gut. Then you work on the liver, then you work on the immune and they knock through. 
Yeah. So, you know, it was, oh, yeah, I couldn't have, I used that song for a number of things as well to remember certain things for certain exams. <laughs> really. Like having music helps you remember things. For yeah. Sure. <laughs> so we've got Ella campaign in your list as well. So I use quite a lot of that for those irritating coughs because it helps relax that bronchi. So that's a really nice one and a very traditional herb as well. That's yeah. been around since. And really day. good for children as well. Mm. So gentle. So that's a good one. I mean, sanju is good for children as well. So that's, again, if it's for children, if you were using sanju in a child's mix, early campaigns are a good substitute there. Yeah. And I just remembered back to the, where we get them from, mm. just of there, but um, well, the reason why we do get them from all these faraway countries is because we usually get them from their country of origin or where they're made oh, yeah. because they're a lot stronger when they grow in their natural environment than when they're harvested, I mean, when they're cultivated in a sort of false environment, I should say, yeah. like they're not native to. So that's why we do try and source from their native environment. Yeah. Otherwise we would get them all from Australia if we could. Yeah, very good point, isn't it? I mean, Madagascar is a very traditional island. It's got some things on there that don't grow anywhere else in the world. It has, yeah. you know, everything about it is unique. So to get the sundew from its home country would make it that much more amazing as a herb that we'd use because it would have all of the components because that's where it's traditionally grown. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah. All the con stronger constituents than I say cultivated yeah. plant. Yeah. Again, yeah, we have to weigh up a lot of other issues associated. Mm. I think we spoke recently in another podcast I wrote about it recently was botanical adulteration. Yes. That's another issue that comes up when we have these problems and that's why we are really focusing on it a lot at the moment, just really making sure we've got the identity right because when you have a problem with these play issues, mm. it can mm. cause adulteration to start happening yep. because people still want it. Yeah. So other people start, you know, taking advantage of that and adulterating, saying, oh, yes, we've got some sanji for you. Yeah. Sanji. Yeah. Um, so... Yeah, it's a good thing to be aware of. Yeah. Back um, in the podcast, there's on the YouTube channel there and in the Facebook group, there's that original recording that I made where we went around and there was the rejected herb, whichever one it was all that time ago. And, you know, had been through all the processes and they'd tried and they'd had to reject it. And they'd even, you know, double checked it at a different university. It's like, yes. maybe we made a mistake, you know, because obviously you don't want to reject it. You want to make and you want to support the farmer. But if they're for whatever reason, mistake or intention, it's got to be rejected because it's not what we want and it's not what we need. And we need to know that I'm putting, you know, Ella campaign in the bottle or sundew in the bottle and not some, you know, marigolds or whatever they've picked instead, you know. So it is super important. And that's the amazing thing with working with Australian companies and a company like yourself where we know the science is there. We know you've got your scientists sitting in their little cubby holes behind their glass <laughs> windows. <laughs> <laughs> and they're testing everything and they're yeah. doing that they're making sure that everything that goes through is what it says it is and that's what the tga they make sure they double check you and it's you know all of these processes are in place to make sure that we get this amazing product yeah exactly. so it's safety efficacy and quality yeah and the three things that are the most important yeah and with sundew, I mean, that's, you know, if you can't get it, you can't get it. It's better to say, sorry, we can't get it, than try and get it from someone else or somewhere else and then discover it's all the wrong one. And that's another really good point about substitutes mm. in the sense of, yeah, we, you know, we'd rather have quality and safety than getting it for having it for that sake of having yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So I mean, we've got a couple of other alternatives there on your list. You've got mullein, red clover and thyme, which yes. all are amazing herbs and I have them all on my shelves. Um, with the other one stuck in there with Ella Campaign and fresh. Yeah, yeah, Grindelia. Yes. Mm. So, I mean, they're all absolutely amazing ones. So the mullein, again, uh, it's really mild, relaxant. So it's going to be a really good one to expectorate those lungs but in a softer way we don't really want to be forcing it up and causing a coughing person to give themselves a hernia or anything else because they're just coughing so much <laughs> <laughs> so i mean traditionally it's been used for you know tuberculosis and all of the other things but you know we don't tend to get those now thankfully yes but we're exactly. still going to get all that you know that hoarseness and bronchitis and that dryness and we're going to need that malaise aren't we 
Again, red clover, another lovely one, another lovely expectorant. And it's pretty too. I do like a pretty. Yes, herb. and you can see that's uh, the Herbal Extract Company's symbol. That's our herb we have on all our products. Um, yeah. And Lindsay liked that one. He chose that one mainly because it's a alternative, like a really good blood cleanser. Yeah. Um, sort of this action of being expectorant is kind of a secondary action that we think of for red clover I think for me anyway yeah. it was more of a, a blood cleanser and you forget that there's this whole sort of anti-spasmodic expectorant side mm. to it yeah yeah I definitely use it for both it's definitely in the bronchitis mixes I will often yeah. put a, just a tiny touch of the red clover in there because I think well it's going to support everything else as well because of this blood cleansing as well as yeah. this cough we're going to get all of these other synergistic happenings with this amazing yeah. herb so yeah I really like that one as well you choose it for someone who maybe also has for example like eczema or psoriasis or yes you know, some sort of, um, where, you know, toxicity like where they need their blood cleansing, which is yeah. a lot of people these days. <laughs> a lot of people. <laughs> a lot of people in the world we're living in, yeah. Associated with the cough is it's a good one for those people. And just yeah. back to the Malayan, I always see that one growing along the roadside. Yes. It's a very common weed, like on the way to um, Canberra, I just think, for you know. Yeah where I'm from but um it's a very spectacular plant you see it sort of growing really high with those beautiful yellow flowers that we use for um, ear infections and yeah it's an amazing Malayan has got so many options I mean it goes yeah. into the oil for the ear infections great for the coughs great for the lung so it's that really upper mm -hmm. respiratory upper part of the body or the ear nose throat all of that area for the Malayan is great yeah. it works really well doesn't it it's got and a weed most of these things are weeds and <laughs> the weeds are sort of the tough ones and they have all the nutrients and it's very velvety the leaf so it's um yeah. you know, almost sort of like the you know the cilia in the lungs yeah yeah the doctrine of signatures yeah. absolutely and then finally on your list we've got thyme which is of course a great one and a really good bug killer as well so yes. it does so much the thyme you know the gargle with thyme I mean it's got this relaxant effect to reduce the spasm it's just an amazing herb and of course again grows everywhere and I've got it all over my garden South Australia of course thyme just grows we don't you know doesn't like a lot of water so it's great to grow here and of course traditionally like the Italians and that they put it in their food they sprinkle it on top of their food yeah. so it's you know eaten as part of the diet as well as taken as an amazing tincture so it's a phenomenal herb that one and another one to really think about that have been used in the diet are great like rosemary sage and thyme because that's traditional use I mean mm. we can see it's been how safe they are I mean in food quantities have been used over thousands of years yeah and we can see that you know it's safe to use mm. in a lot yeah. of people so, yeah. yeah that's a traditional aspect yeah it's um, an amazing, I mean, this is a lovely list of alternatives for a herb that, well, we haven't had for a little while because we haven't been able to get it from you. So, um, but it's an amazing, amazing list of, what, two, four, six, seven yeah, herbs. Out of all the substitutes, you know, when I do substitute stories, this one definitely had a lot. Yeah, and, and they all have a really good story behind all of them and their uses and the other aspects so when you're looking at that person and they've got everything else going on with them they've got you know there's never just one thing no one ever just has a cough you know yeah. there's always oh yes my nose is running on oh, no, my nose is dry my ears are blocked no they're not you know I've got a head cold no I haven't so there's all the other things and so having all the different options when because we do we mix these together to make that perfect tincture exactly as our client needs it so um, it's really good to have all of these different options to look at and go, yeah, that's not going to suit this person, whereas that one is. I'll yeah. go and look it up and get some extra info and see if that's the perfect one for them. So one, um, oh, that's great. It's a really good list. So Yeah, so don't worry about not having sanju because there's good substitutes there. There are definitely substitutes. Well, thank you very much, Christine. It's been wonderful to chat with you again. And thank you, Herbal Extract Company. And I might put it out there that if you're listening and you wanted to give a five-star review on iTunes, if you would, please, that'd be great. We'd love you forever. So um, for now, we will say goodbye. See yeah. ya. Bye, John. Thanks so much for joining me today. Don't forget to rate, review, and subscribe to the podcast for the weekly episodes. If you'd like even more support and learning, then the Academy is for you. Here you'll find part two of the Herbal Discussions, 
more clinical learning and case studies to support your clients in practice. Bye for now.